Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time I'm trying to do one of the most tricky heavy tank missions in the game. This is Heavy Tank 12, which is called Sturdy Armor. And that's because it requires you to block a lot of damage and also deal a reasonable amount of damage as well. Now I'm doing it for the fourth set for the Object 260 in this video, but I'm also going to give you guys tips about how you can do it. You know, the Stugfear, how you can do it for your... T28 heavy tank concept and also for your T55A. So firstly, it's up here, right? Let's take a look at what the conditions are for completing heavy tank 12 for the first set. So for the first set, you need to block an equal amount or exceed the health points of your vehicle and do at least a thousand points of damage. Well, that's not too challenging. I think you could do that by just playing heavy tanks randomly, really, when you have a reasonably okay game. For the HTC, it starts to get a little bit more tricky. You must do double the health points of your vehicle and cause at least 1,500 hit points of damage. I think my recommendation for, for doing maybe the first and the second set is to use the T29. And if you want to be really sneaky as well, you can make the conditions a little easier for yourself by using the 90mm and using the stock turret on the T29. The armor on the stock turret is just as good as the upgraded turret but you reduce your hit points by 100. So that means you only have 1,150 hit points on your tank. And so double that. What, that's only 2,300, right? Oh, I put myself on the spot doing maths quickly. Ooh, uh. So yeah, you can be sneaky. And that's how I managed to do the first three sets of missions. Because 1,500 hit points of damage is not hard in the T29. And if you get yourself hold down, that fantastic turret is going to do work for you. Next, the third set of missions requires you to do triple the health points of your vehicle. So that's why I feel like the T29 is so strong. It's got a great turret. It hasn't got the most hit points. And when you do use the stock turret, that's still only going to be, what, 3,450 health points blocked. And you still only need to do 2,000 damage, which isn't too tricky in the T29. It might give you, it might take you a few games to do it. However, when you get to the fourth set of missions, it, it, firstly, thank goodness it's not quadruple your health. Quadruple your health would be a ridiculous amount. It would be doable, but it would be very tricky indeed. But now you have to do 3,000 health points worth of damage. Now, 3,000 health points worth of damage, I feel, is very tricky for a T29 to do reliably. And so I decided instead to do this mission in the VK4502B. This thing received a monster buff, making its frontal armor just 200 millimeters and very well angled indeed. So that means that realistically to get through the front of the armor, unless you're shooting up into the lower plate, you're gonna need about 300 millimeters of penetration to start to contest the armor. Of course, what we're seeing instead is the enemies are trying to shoot at my cupola, and the ST1 is the only guy so far who's managed to be able to go through my cupola. We have bounced 3,000 damage so far this game. We've dealt 3,000 damage so far this game. We only need another 14... Oh gosh, no, sorry, not 14. We only need another 74 hit points worth of damage to be very close to have done the, well, the damage requirement of 3,000 damage in this mission. The IS is firing high explosive rounds at us, and they're not even doing damage to the front of our armor. It's that darn thick. So what I'm doing with the VK here is basically just showing them the front of my tank. I just want them to shoot at me. When you want to block damage, uh, German tanks are the best for it. Here we can see I'm just saying, well, guys, shoot me for free. And I almost don't want to kill the T29 right now because I'm trying to use him to block damage and to be able to complete my mission. Of course, I still need to do just that little bit more damage, so I'm willing to shoot him once. And there we go. We have completed the damage requirement of Heavy Tank 12. Now, the situation that I found myself in is just perfect for doing this mission. It makes the VK4502 look like an absolute beast. And it is in this kind of a matchup. There's no artillery on the enemy team, and my enemies seem very content to just stay in front of me and not come around the corner and overwhelm me. When you get the sides and the rear of this vehicle, the armor is very weak indeed. The enemies are getting so frustrated that they're beginning to fire APCR rounds at me. 
But even with an APCR round, the IS-3 is incapable of really challenging the front of my armor reliably unless he gets to shoot up into my lower plate as I'm angling it here. Unfortunately, all of my friends are dying around me. We have, in theory, completed the mission. We have blocked 6,500 hit points so far. And so now it's just a case of, well, let's have a cleanup. How are we going to deal with this SD-1? My gun depression isn't quite good enough and I'm hoping he's going to bounce off my upper plate. If the SD-1 fires, then I should be able to advance and take him out. And so what you see me doing is what you're going to have to do if you want to complete your heavy tank 12. I think to do, to reiterate what I said, to complete the first three sets of missions, it's very easy to do in the T-29. And you might be able to do the fourth one in the T-29 as well. But I think that 3,000 damage required is just a little bit too tricky for the T-29. Because you want to get it into a, a top tier matchup. And when you're top tier, pulling off 3,000 damage in a T-29, it's not kind of like every other game. And so when you have to do the blocking damage in conjunction with the 3,000, it could be very frustrating. However, with the VK4502B, pulling off 3,000 damage is very easy indeed. So, it's just a case of hoping that the enemies make mistakes here. I don't want to lose my hit points. I've lost my commander, but I haven't used my med pack because I don't really need my commander right now. He's just, he's just a little bit useful when you start to have to uh, spot enemies who are maybe more than 50 meters away from you. So right now I can just relax and I don't want to lose my loader or my gunner or a more important crew member. Also, my driver will be really important in this situation, so I'm just holding on to that med pack. Of course, I have got a large med pack, which means that I can heal two crew with one. But if I did have a small med pack, I would probably put my commander back in. So we go for the IS-3. Oh, that probably wouldn't have gone in if I wasn't firing an APCR shell. But right now, I do want to complete the secondary reward of the of this mission, which the re well the reward is two days of premium. If I don't die here and I win the battle, I will gain two days of premium as well as four thousand free experience. So as you can see, the rewards that start to get very, very, very good when you go for the two sixty. This ST one is struggling. He really needs to go for my Capola, but he does have a lot more hit points than me. But luckily, I've got a tiger behind me. We put our first round into him. He tries to get my side. He's unable to do so. And we bump into him a little bit. He tries to aim at my Capola, but I put my gun in the way. So I blocked his heat round with my gun. I put in my premium round into him as well. And now he's starting to struggle. I've got him right where I want him. Oh no, a panther hits me in the back with an APCR round. I repair it quickly to repair my ammo rack. Please don't hit my Capola. Please don't hit my Capola. Please don't hit my Capola. Oh, good. Just got him in time. He didn't actually fire at me, so either he was feeling uh, under a lot of pressure there, or he had a dead loader or a dead ammo rack. Great result there for the VK4502B. This thing is an absolute powerhouse at the moment. It truly is. The frontal armor is amazing. And unless they start to pressure your Capola or get the side of your armor, this thing is awesome in a lovely matchup like this. And I have to admit, this was an awesome matchup for the VK4502B for completing Heavy Tank 12. No artillery on the enemy team, a lovely frontal engagement, a rock to hide behind, and being top tier as well. But when you are trying to do some of the hardest missions in the game and you want the stars to align for you and get those 260 missions done, well, you're just going to have to play enough games to find yourself in a good situation like this. I think it must have taken me about 10, maybe 15 goes playing heavy tanks until we finally nailed it. And it was a very rewarding result. And I was super happy by the end of it. So there's never been a better time to get the VK4502B. It received some massive buffs in the last patch. Originally, when I played through this tank, it was horrific. It was almost in every single way worse than an E75. And so that's why I started to call it the mother-in-law, because it was a necessary evil that you had to uh, try and put up with to be able to get towards your goal at the time, which is the mouse. But since coining that phrase and getting married myself, it doesn't really make much sense anymore, because my mother-in-law, I'm, I'm just... Uh, 
super lucky. I think this has got to be bizarre. She's awesome. So, yeah. So let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats. So this was a great round for the VK4502. P. Alfsby showcasing all of its strengths. We got a cool-headed medal for surviving at least 10 ricochets in a row, a high-caliber medal, and unsurprisingly, a steel wall medal. And boy, what a steel wall medal it was. We received nearly 9,000 potential damage, blocking 7,350 with our armor. 1,500 more than we needed to to block the three times hit points of this vehicle. At these kind of ranges, it's hard to miss with the VK. We fired 16, hit 16, and of those, 13 penetrated, but I did fire quite a few APCR rounds just to complete this mission because I was terrified of not quite doing the 3,000 damage. And towards the end, it became a case of, well, I, I kind of want to survive and win this game then to get the two days of premium time, and so every shot counted. Nevertheless, we still made a profit and came through completing Heavy Tank 12, which is more than worth losing even 100 or 200,000 credits for. And so just to reiterate, if you are struggling with Heavy Tank 12 Sturdy Armor, try the T29. I think that is the number one tank for completing at least the first and second set of missions, and it's still pretty darn good for the third. But possibly when you want to try the fourth, or even the third, then the VK4502 B Alps B will be the tank for you. And in retrospect, this game would have been enough to complete the first, the second, and the third of the hardest heavy tank mission, Heavy Tank 15, with honors. And was only one or two bounces away from completing the fourth one for the Object 260 with honors as well. So if you're serious about your missions, you could probably complete every single one of them, at least with regards to the blocking damage with your armor with the VK4502 Alps B. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, or maybe it was just a little useful to you. If it was, please consider giving this video a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to see some more VK4502 P Alps B gameplay, then simply click up here and you can go through to a monster of a round by me on Runeberg. And let me know in the comments down below, what are your tips and tricks for completing Heavy Tank 12 Sturdy Armor? Do you feel like I've covered everything? What do you think that I'm missing some magical mystical tank that might be able to get all of you guys through this mission even easier? And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.